Hello and welcome to my messy office and to the first of what I hope will be a series of videos on high frequency electronic circuit design. Uh, my name is Steve Moss. Uh, you may know of me from uh, a number of books that I've written, probably the most popular of which is Microwave Mixers. And uh, the other one is uh, nonlinear microwave and RF circuits. There are others too, but those are the ones that people seem to buy most often. So I'd like to go through a number of designs uh, using Microwave Office and show you how you can get um, good results in those designs and good results with Microwave Office in ways that people don't really appreciate very much. As I go through my travels, I find that uh, many people just don't know a lot of the more subtle things about circuit designs. So I'm going to start with um, some simpler um, passive circuits and then go on to active circuits and uh, harmonic balance and things like that. There's a lot of subtlety the more complicated they get. Uh, which is to be expected. Uh, I should also say at the outset that this is not an official AWR video. It's just something I'm doing on my own. AWR has nothing to do with it. They've neither sanctioned it nor tried to discourage me from doing it. It's just what we do. Uh, you may also know I was involved with AWR for some period of time in the early days, but I'm not involved at all uh, at this point. So anyway, let's turn to the computer. And let's take a look at things, and uh, let me show you a few things. Okay, here we have the microwave office environment, uh, which I'm going, as I said, I'm going to assume you're familiar with. Uh, I've set up a little project with a Wilkinson uh, power divider, so you can see how they work. Uh, this is, of course, an ideal divider. Uh, I have transmission line models and an ideal resistor model. So this is about as ideal as it gets. Um, notice the characteristic impedance of this line is 70.7 ohms for 50 ohm source and load. And uh, it's 90 degrees long. Well, why is that? If you think of this for a minute, because of its symmetry, we could divide this 50 ohm source into two 100 ohm sources in parallel. And then the link between them could be broken because the voltages at the link are always going to be the same. There's no current across it. So we have 50 ohms at this end of the transmission line, pardon me, 100 ohms at this end of the transmission line, and 50 ohms at this end. So all this is, in effect, <laughs> is a transformer, quarter wave transformer, between 150 ohms. Same down here, of course, again, because of symmetry. Now, why this resistor? Well, that gets a little more complicated, but it turns out that it's necessary so that you have isolation between ports two and three, which, of course, is what you always want in a power divider. Uh, turns out to be 100 ohms in this case, or twice the port impedances. By the way, you could conceivably make the output ports a different impedance from the source port. In that case, it would just be a transformation between 50 ohms and whatever this impedance is. And of course, you'd have to change this resistor as well. Uh, but for now, we're just doing it the simplest way possible and frankly, the most practical way possible. Um, I have a plot here of the performance. Like simulate once to make sure it's clean. And um, here's what we have. I've put the S21, that is the input to output loss, on the left axis, and this is of course in dB, and these other plots I've put on the right axis, again in dB. Uh, this red plot is S22. Uh, that, of course, is the output uh, return loss. And clearly, we don't need to plot S33 because with the symmetry of the circuit, it's got to be the same as S22, right? <coughs> Excuse me. The loss through the power divider, again, is 3 dB. It's actually pretty flat over a fairly wide bandwidth. That's pretty nice. 
And this is S11 in here. And the isolation, S23, which are almost exactly the same. A little bit of difference outside of band, but in band they're virtually the same. So for 20 dB return loss bandwidth, let's say return loss on isolation bandwidth, you've got uh, pretty close to 8 to 12 gigahertz, uh, which is 40% bandwidth. That's pretty good. Pretty good. And if you can tolerate like 14 dB return loss, you've got something uh, below 7 to upwards of thir uh, 13 gigahertz. That looks pretty good. Okay. <laughs> now what else can we do? Well, remember I said this is a quarter wave transformer, right? Well, maybe you could make the bandwidth better with a uh, multi-section quarter wave transformer. And that's exactly what multi-section Wilkinson power dividers are. Um, so let's make one. How do we make one? How do we design one? Well, as long as you can design a multi-section quarter wave transformer, you can design a multi-section Wilkinson power divider. You just use a multi-section quarter wave transformer. Uh, the only thing that's a little tricky is finding the resistances. Uh, the, you need resistances between each stage, just like the 100 ohm resistor in the single stage one. Um, there are expressions for that uh, for up to two segments, I believe. Uh, three and four segments, um, I don't think there's any analytical formulation that anybody's come up with. It's just way too complicated. So let's go down here and try the component synthesis wizard. Uh, I like this wizard, not only because I wrote it, but because it's really, really useful. We're going to make a Wilkinson power divider. Let's go for broke, four section. We want to center at 10 gigahertz and the fractional bandwidth, let's say it's a 1.0 or 100% bandwidth. That means we're designing it for five to 15 gigahertz. As we did before. Okay, port resistances, you can make these different in the way that I just described. And the Wilkinson resistors can be thin film or chip or whatever. If it's thin film, you have to give it the resistance in ohms per square. Now, it will also set this up in microstrip. After all, we want something practical. So I'm going to set it up on Illumina, and that fills these blocks with the usual dimensions that you have for an Illumina circuit uh, in microns. You can make mills if you want. So, uh, and we have that set up, we have this set up, that's all there is to it. Let's synthesize it and then send it to microwave office. Here is our circuit, four sections, one, two, three, four. And uh, we've made some of these, uh, let me, Zoom in here. Uh, made some of these variables just because of the symmetry. We want to be able to tune them and keep them uh, at identical values. So there it is. There's a power divider. Let's just analyze it as it is. And there we go. The loss is about 3.1, 3.2 dB, pretty flat. The return losses are uh, S11 is below, almost below 20 dB, comes up a little bit here. The other things, the S22 and the isolation uh, are uh, all below 20 dB. Now we can tune this a little if we wanted to, uh, and we probably should. Uh, you remember I said that we have analytical formulations for the first two resistances. I think there's a sort of good one for the uh, third resistor, and the last one is largely a guess, to be perfectly honest, based on experience. So one of the things you could do in optimizing this is to uh, uh, take these resistors and tweak them a little bit. You can also tweak some of the lengths and so on. Um, 
we probably should plot this uh, better divisions. 0 0.0 gigahertz divisions. Okay, because of this, it's <laughs> odd increments, but whatever. But here is the edge of our band at 15 gigahertz, and 5 gigahertz is down here. And that's uh, our divider. So that's how you get a multi-section Wilkinson power divider. Now, if I didn't want to use the wizard for some reason, because I wanted to spend much more of my expensive time on it. It's just a simple matter of uh, making a four section uh, quarter wave transformer. You can get the information from that out of Matai, Young, and Jones, and then add the resistors. Uh, the uh, resistors are generally close to 100 ohms here. This one is 70. And they get a little higher as you uh, towards the output. Frankly, you could just make wild guesses for these resistors and uh, then tune it or optimize it. It'll fall into place very quickly. So that's a Wilkinson power divider. That's what they are. That's how they work. And that's how you make one.